Well, what we're going to do here in this part is basically algebra with matrices. So when you think of algebra, let's go back to our original. It's like add, subtract, multiply, divide, that kind of stuff. We're going to do that with matrices. So it's really, this is a lot nicer than what we just got through doing just a second ago. So, I mean, the other stuff is very, very important, and it's definitely worth your time to get down. But just know it's not like, oh, my gosh, this stuff is hard. How much more am I going to have to add on to this? We're getting a little bit break here. Okay. And basically what I want to show you is here, you know, our matrix A. Here's a typical matrix A where you have an element going throughout the, each row and each column. You know, it's always row and column. And I just want to emphasize again the point that whenever you're given... You want to look always at the dimensions of a matrix, and it's always the number of rows by the number of columns. So matrix C that's a 2 by 3 matrix means it has 2 rows and 3 columns, like this one right here above, because A has 2 rows and 3 columns, you know, the first number representing 1 and 2 rows, and eventually getting to 3 columns, okay? All right, so the whole concept of adding and subtracting matrices is the fact of in order to add and subtract, the dimensions have to be exact. A 2 by 2 can only be added to a 2 by 2. A 4 by 3 can only be added or subtracted from a 4 by 3. So before you can add or subtract any matrix, you've got to make sure that they have the exact same dimensions. Now to multiply specifically just a number to a matrix, like let's say I want to come up to matrix A and I want to go 4 times it, then all you have to do is multiply every single value within that matrix by that number. It's as simple as that. Just literally go each element in there and go times 4, times 4, times 4. Simple as that. Even if it was negative, same thing. Just go through and multiply them all by 4. Simple as that. All right, and the next one is the one that gets a little bit more trickier, but definitely something that's not quite as bad as solving matrices by hand. But if you're going to multiply two matrices together, the key is, and this is what I have, it's all about this, what's written right in there. So make sure you really understand that one. Is in order to decide whether two matrices can be multiplied together, is that the fact that the number of columns in the first matrix, so the second number listed in the first matrix, has to equal the number of rows, or the first number, uh, for dimension-wise, in the second matrix. So the number of columns has to equal the number of rows before you can even consider multiplying them together. Okay, so as long as those two match up, almost consider those taking those away, and then the resulting size of the matrix, the, the answer that you're going to get by the time you multiply those together, is then in this case going to be a 3 by 2. That's what I have written right here. The, out, the outside, the two outside numbers is going to be the size of the resulting matrix. Okay? So if you take a 3 by 4 and you multiply it by a 4 by 2, then the answer is going to be a, a matrix that has three rows and two columns. Okay? So let's try this, uh, some of this matrix algebra as we go here to example number 5. And with this example, just kind of like what we talked about, what it wants us to do is find 4 times A minus B. Okay, so I'm going to be multiplying, first of all, just a constant to A, just the number 4 to A, which means I'm going to go to every element in A and multiply everything in there by 4. Simple as that. And then I want to subtract B. Well, since I'm going to be subtracting two matrices, let's check their dimensions. Matrix A has three rows and three columns. Matrix B has three rows and three columns. So since they have the exact same dimensions, that means that we are good to go. We can go ahead and start cons considering doing this problem. Okay, I'm going to go piece by piece. So let's find 4 times A first of all. Well, 4 times A, just going up there, multiplying everything by 4. So 3 times 4 is 12. 2 times 4, 8. 4 times 4, negative 1 times 4. Negative 2 times 4, 6 times 4. 0 times 4, oops. 0 times 4 on good days is definitely 0, <laughs> 3 times 4, and 2 times 4. Okay, so we want to take 4A, and from that we want to subtract matrix B just as is. Okay, so let me write these down just real quick. And how I'm going to subtract to get my overall answer is you're just going to go match them up basically piece by piece. Okay, so the top left or the first row, first element, minus first row, first element. So 12 minus 2 is 10. Second row, first column, to second row, first column. 8 minus 3 is 5. Okay, so why don't you all pause this real quick and see if you can finish this out. But we've got to, like, pay attention really to this last one. Let's see here. Third row, first column, minus, okay, so 16 minus a negative 2. 
This is the only time this problem ever gets hard, y'all, honestly, is making sure you do the double negatives. So 16 minus a negative 2 is 16 plus 2, which is 18. Okay. So why don't you pause to see if you can finish this out real quick. Okay, well, hopefully you kind of check your answers and see if you got about the same things I did. And literally, it's just as simple as that. So just kind of watch out for those constants. And if you ever have double negatives in there, just make sure you watch out for that. Let's try this again. Let's go to example six. We were going to basically be adding and subtracting three matrices together. So let's check the dimensions first of all, since we're just adding and subtracting. It's kind of like how you can only add x squareds with x squareds. They have to be the same base and the same exponent. It's kind of like that. It's just with matrices for you to add and subtract them, then they just got to be dimensionally exact with each other, almost like like terms. This has two rows and three columns. This guy's got two rows and three columns and two rows and three columns. So our answer matrix is definitely going to have two rows and three columns together. Okay. And if you want to try to do this all at one step, we can try it. Okay. So it's going to be, let's see, we've got a 1 plus 4 is 5. 5 minus 2 is 3. Let's see, 3 plus 3 is 6. 6 minus a negative 11, so 6 plus 11 is going to be 27. I'm sorry, I'm thinking too much. Not 27, but just 17. Okay. So do you want to try out the other four numbers? And Let's pause this and see if you get the exact same thing. Okay, and so just comparing the last four numbers, hopefully you guys got the exact same thing. So let's kind of practice this just, uh, just a constant multiplication and adding and subtracting fraction just one more time here with example number seven. So what you're trying to do is find the missing values for each variable. So if you look in here, we have an x variable, we have a y, we look like we have a z over here, and then a u right there. So we need to figure out what is x and what is y and what is z and what does u represent. Okay. So what I recommend doing is let's just let's see if we can form some equations out of all of this. Let's go. Let's match up since these are all two by twos. Let's see if we can write. Let's match up all of the first elements in the first row and the first columns together. So if I went down the line, it would be 1 minus 4 times 2. So 1 minus 4 times the 2 equals 33z. Okay, let's do the same thing. Let's go, let's maybe start down here. Okay, so the second row, first column. So 2y minus the second row, first column on the other one. So 4 times 0 is equal to second row, first column, so 4. All right, let's write two more of these then. So x minus 4 times negative 2 is equal to 10. And then one last one, that very last second row, second column. So negative 3 minus 4 times 3 is equal to negative u. Okay. So if you look at these, each of these four things right here, they basically are going to answer our questions for us because every one single one of these only has one variable in it. So we can easily answer these out. Okay. So 1 minus 8 is equal to 3z. We're solving it out. Negative 7 is 3z. So divide by 3, and then we know that z is negative 7 thirds. There's one of our answers. We have 2y minus 4 times 0, which is 0, equals 4. So that goes away. We divide both sides by 2, and we get y equals 2, just like that. This says x plus 8 equals 10. So moving the 8 over by subtracting, so 10 minus 8 is 2. Got another 2 right there. And then right here, negative 3 plus, oops, no, minus. We got a negative 4 and a positive 3, so definitely a minus. 12 is equal to negative u. So negative 15 equals negative u, or if I divide off that coefficient, then I know that u is equal to positive 15. And there's my answer for that one. So all you had to do was basically write an equation out going top, you know, first row, first column, to first row, first column, all throughout the whole process. And that kind of helps you really understand the whole adding and subtracting and then also multiplying a constant by a function. Okay. Let's keep going on just a little bit here. Starting out here with example eight, what we're trying to do really is go on to now, we've, we've done the, the first two that we listed. The adding, subtracting, and then multiplying just a single number to a whole entire matrix. What we want to focus on here is now on the whole concept of multiplying two matrices together. So it says that matrix A has the dimensions of 1 by 7. 
B has the dimensions of seven by one. So let's find the dimensions. If I go A times B, okay. So what that's telling me to do is go one by seven, and I'm gonna multiply it by a seven by one. Okay, so can I do that, first of all? Well, yes I can, because the number of columns of A equals the number of rows of B. So those match up, and then the resulting size is going to be a one by one matrix. So look at that. If I take something that has one row, so just one row but seven columns in it, and I take it and multiply it by something that has seven rows and one column, by the time I multiply all these out, all I'm going to do is get one tiny little matrix that just has a single number in it, let's say like negative three, and that's the answer. It's kind of interesting. Definitely multiplying matrices is a lot different than what we've seen before. So the sizes are all going to change. Okay, if we go the other way around and we try B times A, okay, B is a seven by one. So if I take that guy and I multiply it then by A, which is a one by seven, let's check out the number of columns of B matches up with the number of rows of A. So those match up and then what's going to result is a matrix that has both seven rows and seven columns. So a very, very large matrix. Okay, so that kind of gets you an idea of the first step of multiplication. You've got to check the dimensions, and then you can go from there. So let's try example number nine. 